Hello, and thanks for uh, the opportunity to talk about some of the work that we've done over the last year. Um, I'm really sorry that I can't be there to uh, present this in person. Um, I had a bit of an adventurous weekend, which has resulted in um, probably three weeks of hospitalisation. So hopefully when I'm up and walking, I can come up to CQ again and answer any questions you may have on, on what I'm going to present. Is the climate changing or are we, or are we just observing variability? This is a big discussion and lots of people want to talk, have lots of views on it. Um, I'm probably not going to get into it too much. I'm just going to talk historically about what we've observed in our current meteorological files and what does that mean for our future management of sorghum crops. One of the approaches I'm, I'm using is what's called the climate normal concept. Uh, this is the recommended a method for um, analysing climate uh, as proposed by the World Bureau of Meteorology. And what it does is uses chunks of 30 year chunks, overlapping chunks of 30 years. Um, the reason 30 years is selected is that's considered a long enough period of time to account for unusual events. So particularly long droughts, a number of wet seasons. So they get evened out. So it's a, a way of ensuring that you're getting a representative sample as opposed to a slightly obscured sample, which may happen if you used, uh, if you used the last 10 years with the current droughts that we've had, uh, that would be a fairly skewed um, result compared to say, um, using 30 years worth of data, which would uh, make things a little bit more balanced. On top of that, I'm only going to really to spend most of my time talking about the last 60 years. So I'm going to ignore a lot of the time that green and blue uh, climate normal and just compare the first 30 years versus the second 30 years of the last 60. So I'm going to compare the olive green one to the, to the pinky purple one, the number five up at the top. So how's the Mara climate environment changing? It's getting drier. So looking at the last historic rainfall over the last uh, 60 to 70 years, it has declined on an, on an average basis, the average uh, some of, it says some of daily rainfall there, that's the average yearly rainfall, has declined. And when you look at that, it's, um, it's only a little bit. Uh, in this case, it is actually a significant decline in rainfall. If we break that rainfall up, you know, is it more loss of rainfall in the summer, which you would expect, knowing that it's a summer dominant rainfall area um, or is it more from the winter well surprisingly it has been uh, more from the summer but in this la looking in the last 30 uh, years it's tended to drop more in the winter as well thinking of temperature so daily average temperature what i've done here is taken the the average daily temperature. So imagine if the temperature overnight was 20 degrees and the temperature during the day was 30 degrees. We add those to get 50 and we divide by two. So we have an average daily temperature of 25 degrees. If tomorrow was basically exactly the same, I would add those together and I've now accumulated 50 day degrees. And what I've done is done that through, throughout a year and over the 30 years got the average of those. So you can see the average heat sum of temp, you know, the average heat that is experienced in, the, in Mara over 365 days has generally been increasing over time. So it's hotter. And most of that heat 
is pretty evenly distributed between summer and winter. So uh, it's not, not, not obscured, that is. So the summers aren't getting hotter and the winters remaining the same. Both summer and winter are increasing in temperature. Okay, extreme temperatures. Extreme temperatures are those temperatures above 35 degrees in this case. And we've singled them out because once you get above 35 degrees, you can denature um, pollen. And so you affect flowering within sorghum crops. Um, and most of what we're talking about is sorghum here. So I've just gone through and counted the number of days that you exceed 35 degrees. And you can see that over time, over the, the period, more and more, there is more and more days above 35 degrees. More recently than there was in the past. And as you'd expect, the majority of that's occurring in the summer, but it is surprising that we've gone from basically no days above 35 degrees in winter to quite regularly having some days above 35 degrees in, in winter. So this analysis has been done not just in, the, in uh, your area, but done right down the eastern seaboard or the eastern grains region. Um, and we've done it in a way that we've looked at two transects. So we have an eastern transect and a western transect. Today, talking to you, I'm going to mainly focus on the eastern transect, but the western transect will be there for those who wish to observe and see, what hap see what's happening there. So here, if we look at the eastern transect, which is the, the table of numbers and colours on the right, you can see that we have all the towns going from north to south and, the, and along the bottom we have each month. So what's in the table? The, the values in the, in the table are the difference between the last 30 years and the previous 30 years. So what, they mean, what that means is, let's say there's been more rainfall in the, uh, in the past than there was now, then the values will be red and you will get a negative value. Those that are values are blue is when the values now have been higher than in the past. Okay, so the general pattern looking at that via months is that it's, it's generally pretty red, but you're starting to get, you can see as you move into some of the more southern areas that you're starting to get a bit of blue around February. Uh, where there seem to be getting increased rainfall, particularly around that Gundawindi Yellaroy area. Um, if you're seeing yellow or a really yellow colour, then it's fairly neutral. So looking at this and looking at Bilawila, which is probably the closest site that we've got, um, you can see that there's been a decline in rainfall in November, December and January. And then it's fairly neutral for most of the other months. Slight increase there in October, but everything else is fairly yellow or pale or, or pale red. Okay, following the same concept, but looking at temperature, this time we actually swap things around. So now we are, our difference is if the temperature is higher in the more recent um, climate normal, then it will be red. If it is um, cooler in the more uh, re recent climate normal, then it'll be blue, otherwise it's yellow, if there's been basically no change. And what you can see there is certainly Bilawila is fairly consistently red. Um, there are a couple of months, April, May, which seem to be fairly neutral and haven't changed much. If I was there, I would be asking you, does that fit with everybody's general belief? But anyway, we'll move on. So how will all of that affect production of sorghum? So following the same pattern, we're looking at our eastern transect. What we've done is run a series of simulations where we've grown and then we've compared the average yield 
from the first 30 years to the second 30 years. Where it's red, you can see that we're having a loss in yield. So there's been a yield decline. Along the bottom, I'll just point out, is no longer months. It's actually the dates that, you were, that the crops were sown. So sowing from August through to about December, uh, the end of December, you're either losing, you're either having a lower yield, a lower yield potential, um, or neutral. From January through to February, it's fairly neutral. So no increase in yield potential, but um, uh, not a, a major um, uh, loss either. But uh, there is definitely a decline in yield potential over all those or over those different sowing dates. This was all done using a hundred millimeters of water. Oh, sorry, using a full profile. Because there was a full profile, the only thing that was influencing the growth of this uh, these crops, the only difference, is the temperature and rainfall. So, hence why we're sitting on that fairly neutral to um, slight decline. We got a slight, we showed that there was a slight decline in rainfall. Well, let's have a look. If we look at rainfall, uh, so, oh, so here's the median difference in yield. What we've done here is said, okay, how much of that can be compensated by soil water? So here we've only planted the crop with 100 mils of water under in the soil at sowing. Um, again, the same, exactly the same climate, but you can see if you look at Billa Wheeler, it's a lot more red now, so there's a greater yield loss, which means that there is a chance to compensate for the climate, the effects of climate, by ensuring you have plenty of soil water at sowing to help buffer the stress and strain of uh, um, the higher temperatures and the lower rainfall. So let's look at the in-crop rainfall and, and that supporting that. Oops, gone too far. And that supporting that, that you can see that sort of, if we look at Billa Wheeler, it's fairly pinky uh, or orangey with a fair bit of yellow. So there is a decline, a less rainfall falling when those crops were grown. You look down at Gundawindi, is the only place, you know, at Gundawindi, Yalaroi, Moree, um, between October and January, they are actually having an increase in rainfall. There seems to have been an in, things have shifted so that they've now got increased rainfall in that area. Okay, if we look at temperature, so we've got less rainfall, we've also got higher temperatures and quite high temperatures. So these are the number of days um, above 35 degrees during actual flowering. So using the simulation model, we've identified when the plant starts to flower and we've counted any days that were above 35 degrees. And you can start to see that December uh, sowing dates, you're going to get six, you know, six to seven days. Um, or is that eight? Eight, eight, eight and a half. You know, so, so between eight and nine days that are above 35 degrees. So that will have a significant impact on the yields and help and, and cause a reduction in yield. So in conclusion, those increasing temperatures mean the plants will need more water. You can compensate that by having more water in the soil, which will help. Um, so, but you can't, can't have any more than what the soil can hold. So. One strategy is increasing the amount of soil water in the soil when you plant your crop from what you've done in the past will help compensate for some of the effects of climate, that increasing temperature and lower rainfall. Uh, one of the interesting things that has come out is yes, those high temperatures at flowering will also have increased and will reduce um, the yield, but they don't seem to reduce the yield as much as the lack of rainfall or water. So the compensation for that, again, is making sure you give as much water as you possibly can 
to the crop. Water's king. If you plant on a high water trigger, then you can help compensate some of these impacts of climate. One of the final questions that lots of people have asked or suggest said to me is that uh, uh, is the climb is the sorghum growing area shifting? Are we moving away? You know, uh, those areas that were particularly good for sorghum now going to be not that good. What I have here is instead of what I've been looking showing you in the past is a, a difference between the two climate normals. Here are the two climate normals side by side for both the eastern and the western transect. And what you can see is that although the left hand side in this case is a little darker than the right hand side, which means, so this, if we're looking at the eastern transect only, the left hand side is fractionally darker than the right hand side. What that's meaning is that there is a yield reduction between the first climate normal and the second climate normal. But you're not seeing, as we go from north to south, any major swapping. So those areas that were always good sorghum producing areas are still good sorghum producing areas. They may have just got a slightly lower yield potential and that's fairly consistent right down the uh, eastern seaboard. So with that, thank you for putting up with me not turning up to uh, deliver my GRDC talk, but I hope this video has been of some use or provoke some questions and at another date and another time I'd love to come and be happy to answer any problem questions you may have. Thank you.